highly condensed version of an important legend. Um, it's the legend of Beowulf. We've cut it down quite a bit so that we can squeeze it all in for you this morning. Part one. Um, and we hope that you really enjoy it. I think you'll recognize the most important, important pieces have been preserved. So. Here we, we've heard of Danish heroes, ancient kings and the glory they got for themselves, slinging mighty swords. In those days, Hrothgar, taking the throne, built a hall to hold his mighty band, and he named it her own. He commanded a banquet and opened his treasureful hands. A powerful monster, living down in the darkness, growled in pain, impatient, as day after day the music rang around that hall. Then, when darkness had dropped, Grendel went up to her room. He found them sprawled in sleep, suspecting nothing. He snatched up thirty men and ran out with their bodies to his lair, delighted with the night slaughter. Hrothgar, their lord, sat joyless in her own, a mighty prince, mourning the fate of his lost friends and companions. He wept, fearing the beginning might not be the end. And that night, Grendel came again. So Grendel ruled, fought with the right <coughs> one against many and <coughs> So Hero stood empty and stayed deserted for years. Twelve winters of grief for Hrothgar, king of the Danes. In his far off land, Beowulf, strongest of the Geats, quickly commanded a boat fitted out, proclaiming that he'd go to that famous king now when help was needed. So Beowulf chose the mightiest men he could find, the bravest and best of the Geats. Ready for what came, they wound through the currents, and that oak hard boat to where their hearts took them. In the far off, uh, <laughs> by the wall, a Danish weapon who climbed the cliffs saw the travelers crossing the shore. <laughs> Whose soldiers are you, you who've been carried in your deep keeled ship across the sea road to this country of mine? We are Geats, and we have come seeking your prince, Halfdan's son, protector of these people, only in friendship. I believe in your words. I trust in your friendship. Go forward, weapons and armor and all, on into Denmark. I'll guide you myself, and my men will guard your ship. They are deep, we'll come sailing across the open ocean to our land, from far over the highways. My lord, grant my gracious answer, see them, and hear what they come for. My lord, the great king of the Danes, commands me to tell you that he knows in your noble birth, and that having come to him from over the sea, you'll come bravely and they're welcome. Hail, Hrothgar. God. Grant me, Lord and protector of this noble place, a single request, that I, alone and with the help of my men, may purge all evil from us all. God must decide who will be given to death's cold room. Beowulf, you have come to us in friendship. My tongue grows heavy in my heart when I try to tell you what Grendel has brought us, the damage he's done here in this hall. Surely the Lord Almighty can stop this madness. That night, the Geek's great chief dropped his head to his pillow, and all around him, as ready as they could be, lay the soldiers who had crossed the sea at his side. Each of them sure that he was lost to the home he loved, to the high-walled towns and the friends he had left behind. But God's dread loom was woven with defeat for the monster. Good fortune for the Geats. Out of the darkness, the monster began to walk. The warriors slept in that gable hall, but Beowulf lay lateful, watching, waiting, and eager to meet his enemy and angry at the thought of his coming. Out of the marsh, from the foot of misty hills, bearing God's hatred, Grendel came. He journeyed, forever joyless, straight to the door, then snapped it open. He stopped, seeing the hall crowded with sleeping warriors. Then he snatched it to his feet and ripped him apart. Then he steps to another still body and clutched the veil with his mouth. Grasped at the strong-hearted, wakeful sleeper, and then he sees himself. Claws back, bent back as Baal flings upon him. All his brave men had jumped from the bed. Sestral swords raised and ready, determined to take their head. Their courage was great, but wasted, for that sin-stained demon had bewitched all men's weapons, laid spells that wanted every mortal man's blade. Yet, the time had come, his days were over, and his death near. Now, Grendel realized what it meant to fight Almighty God. He saw that his strength was deserting him. He twisted in pain and a sharp snap and broke. The battle was over. Beowulf had been granted new glory. Grendel escaped, but wounded as he was, could flee 
to his dead, only to die and live for the end of all of his days. Beowulf, a prince of the Geats, who killed Grendel, and did the grief force of Hrothgar's helpless people, but then the king ordered her own queen and hung her rations. Hundreds of hands hurried to make the great hall ready. Then the king made his way to the hall. It was time, and his heart drew him to the banquet. No victory was celebrated better, by more or by better men and their king. The world in all its long days full of labor brings good and evil. All who remain here meet both. Hmm.